evening, everybody, and welcome to another night of Daily Bible Kids. Um, again, we're trying to get through the Bible in case the UART guys are just coming in. I'm trying to get through it in a year time, but at the same time, not trying to rush, but try to understand, you know, what we just read. And I know there's going to be a lot of things that's going to be kind of hard to understand later on. Um, right now, we're just getting in through the human history, you know, going through all that. Um, if you have any questions about what we just read, please ask them so we can make sure you understand it, okay? Especially you, little one. All right. So we just uh, left off last time with um, Joseph interpreted two of the dreams. Don't. Two of the dreams. Um, with the uh, cupbearer and the, the, uh, the uh, baker. Uh, baker. Yeah. Very good. Almost. Okay. So that was chapter 40. Now we're going to do chapters 41 and 42. Okay? So, two full years later, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing on the bank of the Nile River. In his dream, he saw seven fat, healthy cows coming up from the river and begin to graze in the marsh grass. Then he saw seven more cows come up behind them from the Nile. But these were scrawny and thin. These two, these cows stood beside the fat cows on the riverbank. Then the scrawny, thin cows ate the seven healthy fat cows. At this point in the dream, Pharaoh woke up. But he fell asleep again. He had a second dream. This time he saw seven heads of grain, plump and beautiful growing on a single stalk. Then seven more heads of grain appeared, but these were shriveled up and withered by the east wind. And these thin heads swallowed up the seven plump, well-formed heads. Then Pharaoh woke up again and he realized it was just a dream. The next morning Pharaoh was very disturbed by these dreams. So he called for all the magicians and the wise men of Egypt when Pharaoh told them his dreams, not one of them could tell what they meant. Finally, the king's chef or king's chief cupbearer spoke up. Today, I have been reminded of my failure, he told Pharaoh. Some time ago, you were angry with the chief baker and me, and you imprisoned us in the palace of the captain of the guard. One night, the chief baker and I each had a dream and each dream had its own meaning. There was seven young Hebrew men, there was a young Hebrew man with us in prison who was a slave of the, of the captain of the guard. We told him our dream and he told us what each of our dream meant and everything happened just as he predicted. I was restored to my position as cupbearer and the chief baker was executed and impaled on a pole. Pharaoh sent for Joseph at once, and he was quickly brought from the prison. After he shaved and changed his clothes, he went in and stood before Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream last night, and no one here could tell me what it means. But I heard that you, but, the, when, uh, sorry, but I have heard that when you hear about dreams, you can interpret it. It is beyond my power to do this, Joseph replied, but God can tell you what it means and set you at ease. So Pharaoh told Joseph his dream. In my dream, he said, I was standing on the riverbank of the Nile when I saw seven fat, healthy cows come up out of the river and begin grazing in the marsh grass. When I said, when I saw seven sick looking cows, scrawny and thin, come up after them, I've never seen such a sorry looking animals in all the lands of Egypt. These thin scrawny cows ate the seven fat cows. But afterwards, you wouldn't have known it, for they were still as thin and scrawny as before. Then I woke up. Then I fell asleep again, and I had another dream. This time, I saw seven heads of grain, full and beautiful, growing on a single stalk. Then seven more heads of grain appeared, but these were blight 
shriveled and withered by the east wind. And the shriveled heads swallowed the seven healthy heads. I told these dreams to the magicians, but no one could tell me what they mean. Joseph responded, Both of Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God is telling Pharaoh in advance what he is about to do. The seven healthy cows and the seven healthy heads of grain both represent seven years of prosperity. The seven thin, scrawny cows that came up later and the seven thin heads of grain withered by the east wind represented seven years of famine. This will happen just as I have described it, for God has revealed to Pharaoh in advance what he is about to do. The next seven years will be a period of great prosperity throughout the land of Egypt. But afterward, there will be seven years of famine so great that all the prosperity will be forgotten in Egypt. Famine will, will destroy the land. This famine will be so severe that even the memory of the good years will be erased. As for having two similar dreams, it means that these events have been decreed by God, and he will soon make them happen. Therefore, Pharaoh should find an intelligent and wise man, and put him in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh should appoint supervisors over the land, and let them collect one-fifth of all the crops during the seven good years. Have them gather all the food produced in the good years that are just ahead and bring it to Pharaoh's storehouses. Store it away and guard it so there will be food in the cities, so that there will be enough to eat when the seven years of famine come into the land of Egypt. Otherwise, this famine will destroy the land. So right there, Joseph is the very first one to come up with the idea of stockpiling. Okay, store uh, a warehouse, a store storage units, you know, let's store the food of what we got. Let's take a fifth of everything that we produce and we're going to put it aside. Okay, that way when those seven years come, you don't have to worry about any food. You've got it stored away. Joseph's suggestions were all, rece were all received by Pharaoh and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in fine linen clothing and hung a gold chain around his neck. Then he had Joseph ride in the chariot reserved for his second-in-command. And wherever Joseph went, the command, yeah, the command was shouted, Kneel down! So Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh. But no one will lift a hand or foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. And then Pharaoh gave Joseph a new Egyptian name. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Zaphinathpane. <laughs> uh, pro it says, probably means God speaks and lives. He also gave him a wife whose name was Asnath. Asnath? Asnath? Uh, she was the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. So Joseph took charge of the entire land of Egypt. He was 30 years old when he began serving in the court of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And when Joseph left Pharaoh's presence, he inspected the entire land of Egypt. As predicted, for seven years, the land produced uh, bumper crops during those years, Joseph gathered all the crops down in Egypt and stored the grain from the surrounding fields in the cities. He piled up huge amounts of grain like sands on the seashore. Finally, 
he stopped keeping records because there was too much to measure. During this time, before the first of the famine years, two sons were born to Joseph and his wife. Asnath, the daughter of Potiphar, the priest of On. Joseph named his older son Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and everyone in my father's family. Joseph named his second son Ephraim, for he said, God has made me fruitful in this land of my grief. At last, the seven years of bumper crops throughout the land of Egypt came to an end. Then the seven years of famine began, just as Joseph had predicted. And the famine also struck all the surrounding countries, but throughout Egypt, there was plenty of food. Eventually, however, the famine spread throughout the land of Egypt as well. And when the people cried out to Pharaoh for food, he told them, Go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. So, with severe famine everywhere, Joseph opened up the storehouses and distributed the grain to the Egyptians. For the famine was so severe throughout the land of Egypt. And people from all around came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph, because the famine was severe throughout the world. Any questions on that chapter? Wasn't like, was not like tax when they were taking one fifth of everything. No, that's storing. It's just storing what you have. No, it's taxes work almost the same way. You take a tenth or like well, a tithe for God, which like our offering at church. So that'd be a tenth of what we earn goes into the offering to help the church out. Taxes, there's a certain percentage of whatever that you earn gets taken out goes to taxes. Here we're dealing with grains and storage. So if a fifth, uh, one fifth of everything that's produced gets stored away. That way, everybody who is hungry can come and buy from Joseph. Any questions? All right. 42. When Jacob heard that grain was available in Egypt, he said to his sons, Why are you standing around looking at one another? I've heard that there's grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy enough grain to keep us alive. Otherwise, we'll die. So Joseph's ten older brothers went down to Egypt to buy grain. But Jacob wouldn't let Joseph's younger brother Benjamin go with them for fear some harm might come to him. So Jacob's sons arrived in Egypt along with others to buy food, for the famine was in Canaan as well. Since Joseph was governing all of Egypt and in charge of selling grain to all the people, it was to him that his brothers came. When they arrived, they bowed before him and their faces to the ground. Joseph recognized his brothers instantly, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where are you from? he demanded. From the land of Canaan, they replied. We have come to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. And he remembered the dreams he had about them years before. He said to them, you are spies! You have come to see how vulnerable our land has become. No, my lord, they exclaimed. Your servants have simply come to buy food. We are all brothers, members of the same family. We are honest men, sir. We are not spies. Yes, you are, Joseph insisted. You have come to see how vulnerable our land has become. Sir, they said, there are actually 12 of us. We, your servants, are all brothers, son of a man living in the, Can in the land of Canaan. Our youngest brother is back where our father is right now, and one of our brothers is no longer with us. But Joseph insisted, As I said, you are spies. This is how I will test your story. I swear by the life of Pharaoh that you will never leave Egypt unless your younger brother comes here. One of you must go and get your brother. I'll keep the rest of you here in prison. Then we'll find out whether you, whether or not your tr story is true. By the life of Pharaoh, if it turns out that you don't have a younger brother, then I'll know that you are spies. So Joseph put them all in prison for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to them, I am a God-fearing man. If you do as I say, you will live. If you are really honest men, choose one of your brothers to remain in prison. The rest of you may go home with grains for your starving families. But you must bring your youngest brother back to me. 
This will prove that you are telling the truth, and you will not die. To this, they agreed. Speaking among themselves, they said, Clearly, we are being punished because of what we did to Joseph long ago. We saw his anguish when he pleaded for his life, but we wouldn't listen. That's why we're in trouble. Didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? Reuben asked. But you wouldn't listen. And now we have to answer for his blood. Of course, they didn't know that Joseph understood them, for they had speaking they had speaking to them through an interpreter. So they didn't know that Joseph could actually speak their native tongue. Okay? They just thought, you know, we're just gonna talk about ourselves, we're not gonna understand. Now he turned away from them and began to weep. Joseph just cried really hard. Okay. And then he regained his composure and he spoke to them again. Then he chose Simeon from among them. And he had, he had him tied up right before their eyes. Joseph then ordered his servant servants to fill the men's sacks with grain. But he also gave secret instructions to return each brother's payment at the top of his sack. He also gave them supplies for their journey home. So the brothers loaded their donkeys with the grain and decided to head home. But... When they stopped for the night, and one of them opened their sacks to get grain for his donkey, he found the money in the top of his sack. Look! He exclaimed to his brothers, My money has been returned! It's here in my sack! Then their hearts sank. Trembling, they said to each other, What has God done to us? When the brothers came to their father, Jacob, in the land of Canaan, they told him everything that had happened to them. The man who is governor of the land spoke very harsh to us, they told him. He accused us of being spies, spies scouting the land. But we said, we are honest men, not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of one father. One brother is no longer with us, and the youngest is at home with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man who is governor of the land told us, this is how I will find out if you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me and take your grains to for your starving families and go home. But you must bring your youngest brother back to me. Then I will know you're honest men and not spies. Then I will give you back your brother and you may trade freely in the land. As they emptied out their sacks, there in each man's sack was the bag of money he had paid for the grain. The brothers and their father were terrified when they saw the bags of money. Jacob exclaimed, you are robbing me of my children. Joseph is gone. Simeon is gone. And now you want to take Benjamin too? Everything is against me. Then Reuben said to his father, You may kill my two sons if I don't bring Benjamin back to you. I'll be responsible for him. And I promise to bring him back. But Jacob replied, My son will not go down with you. His brother Joseph is dead. And he is all I have left. If anything should ever happen to him on your journey, you'd be sin you would be sending grieving this way. Well, er, I'm sorry. You would send this grieving white-haired man to his grave. So he's worried about it, right? Well, that's the end of our reading for tonight. To find out what happens, you gotta come back with us tomorrow. Alright, any questions in that chapter? Talking about the thing is. <laughs> Any questions? Alright. Well, we will see you guys tomorrow night. You guys have a wonderful night and God bless.